our hearts cry out for our love for you is so strong. For we know that from you we have come, and unto you we belong. How fortunate we are to be best with the ability of loving you. This is the only love that lasts forever, the love that remains true. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the secrets of the heart. All praises due to Allah, we praise Him and we thank Him. And we are so grateful to Him for everything He's given us and everything He keeps giving us. And we send peace and blessings on our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts and to help us take good care of them so they help us and they guide us to paradise, to the eternal happiness and the land of the ultimate opportunities. Today, inshallah, we will elaborate more on a question that we answered previously. The question was about how can I tell if my heart is healthy, if my heart is doing well? And we provided the basic answer, which is the heart has been created for a purpose. And as long, your, as, long as your heart fulfills that purpose, the new heart is healthy. If it doesn't do the job, the new heart is ill and you need to treat it urgently because the real life in this world is the life of the heart. And anyone who thinks that by focusing on the body and neglecting the heart, if they think that this is real life, they don't know what real life is because the heart has been created to recognize Allah, to love Him, to be attached to Him. To hang all hope on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be aware of Allah all the time. Now if this doesn't, doesn't happen, the heart will always suffer. So real paradise for the heart is in knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being aware of Him all the time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made paradise in this world and in the hereafter. Obviously the real paradise, the highest level of paradise is in the hereafter, which is Jannah which all of us hope for. But there is some kind of paradise, some kind of happiness, some kind of tranquility and peace that can be felt and can be lived in this world. And actually, some of the scholars of Islam, like Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy on him, he says there is paradise on earth, in this world. Those who fail to enter it will not, will not enter paradise in the hereafter. What is this? He said, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Getting to love Allah, being aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Allah does not admit to paradise, to the land of His blessings, the land which is full with the remembrance of Allah. What makes paradise so beautiful is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described the happiness and the blessings that the people of paradise will enjoy, he mentions that on the day of Friday, Allah will call all the people of paradise in one open and plain landscape or area. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them, are you happy with what I've given you? They will say, of course we are happy, but what we want you to be happy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I am pleased with you. I am pleased with you. And they were pleased, and they are pleased with him. Then Allah will say to them, I will give you something more. They said, what else do you have to give us? What, what remains other than that? You have saved us from the hellfire. And you have admitted us to paradise. And to, to live there forever. And you have given us everything we wished for. And things we've never even thought about. What else? And you are pleased with us. What else you know, do we need? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals His face to them. And Allah will converse with each and every one of them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that this is the highest level of sweetness and blessings the people of paradise will be given. To be able to look at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah converses with each and every one of them privately. This is the highest 
blessing. This is the highest ecstasy. This is the highest tranquility. This is the highest level of prosperity in paradise. To be able to be given the privilege to look at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet ﷺ says, they will never find anything sweeter than that, anything more beautiful than that. This is the best thing they would be given ever to be able to look at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no one will be given this privilege of really and in actuality looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, looking at the face, being given this privilege of looking at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless in this world they've been given the privilege of the hearts being aware and always thoughtful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the recompense will be of the same kind. Allah will always respond in kind. If you keep Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your mind, your heart is always busy with the greatness of Allah, with the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will be given real paradise in the hereafter. And Allah will Allah made actually thoughtfulness about him and awareness of him, of his names and his attributes and dedication to him. Allah made it paradise in this world. And I will quote here some of the statements of some you know, uh, scholars of Islam, uh, there is one of the early generations, a person, a righteous person from the early generations, he says that the people of this world, the people who are always chasing the, you know, the material uh, extravagances, the material uh, joys of this world, they are so pathetic. Imagine the rich people, the wealthy people, who enjoy everything they want, who have posh houses, they have posh cars, anything they, they, they think of, they can just buy it, they can get that. No problem. Anything they think about, they can get it. And they live according to a, an extremely high standard. Those people, he says, they are pathetic. And maybe this person was very poor, and I believe he was very poor. They are pathetic. They've lived in this world throughout their lives, and then they departed without tasting the sweetest thing, the sweetest feeling in this world. Imagine, so a person can live in extreme richness, being well off, anything he, could, he, he, thought, he thinks about, he can get that. But still his state is pathetic. They lived in this world without tasting the sweet, they've missed the, sweet, the sweetest thing in it. So the people asked him, what is the sweetest thing in this world? He said, knowing Allah, getting to know our Creator, being thoughtful of Him, and then loving Him overwhelmingly, and fearing His punishment, and being so much attached to Him, and having this eagerness, and this, keen, this keenness, and this hope to be able to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in paradise on the Day of Judgment. That's the sweetest thing in this world. And the righteous people, they know what this, the, what these statements mean. Another person says that I go through some moments that make me say to myself, if the people of paradise live in a similar state of ec ecstasy, wallahi, they are in a wonderful, oh, they are living a wonderful life. Imagine, he's talking about, still he's talking about this world. So money, wealth, all the pleasures of this world carry no weight. They cannot, they don't stand comparison uh, in opposition to the sweetness of Al-Iman, the sweetness of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being thoughtful of Him, being so keen and having so much hope to be able to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at His face, having this wonderful privilege in paradise on the day of standing. Imam Al-Qayyim himself says that there is a feeling of emptiness in the heart that will not be filled except by being so thoughtful about Allah. And there is a feeling of loss in the heart that cannot be removed except by feeling, except by feeling sufficiency in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a feeling of thirst and hunger in the heart, a profound feeling of thirst in the heart that cannot be quenched except by having knowledge of Allah 
and having love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the heart has been created for. So if you have these things, then your heart is inshallah on the right path. But if you don't if you have no clue about these things, then you have to check out your heart and you have to find out how to treat it. Because that's a very serious illness. Because you don't know what you are missing, not only in the hereafter but even in this world. The real life is the life of the heart and there is no life for the heart except by knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being so much attached to Him and uh, so much thoughtful about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, aware, about, aware of being aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. All the time your thoughts are about Allah. Everything, you see everything through your relationship and through your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the real happiness in this world. And when a person reaches this level, no matter what happens in life, makes no difference. If they live rich or poor, it's not, so, it's not a big thing. You know, when the heart is feeling rich with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, other things, you know, mean very little. They carry no weight. Once you have secured your heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then anything else, any, you know, physical or material or, you know, things about this world, the standard of living, the conditions in which you live or anything else, you know, they mean almost nothing. Once the heart is with Allah, that's it. That's the ultimate richness. That's the ultimate beauty. That's the ultimate tranquility. And this is paradise on earth. So those who don't know about this feeling, you have to hasten. You have to rush to fix your heart and find out what you are missing. One day a righteous person said, he said, by Allah, wallahi, if the people of extreme you know, richness and extravagance and the kings with everything they have and all the pleasures and all the extravagances they enjoy in this world, wallahi, if they know of the sweetness that our hearts are living in, of the beautiful and the tranquil you know, quality of life we are having, they would fight us in order to take it or confiscate it away from us. But they, are, they, but they will be unable to take it. Because the only way to have it is to live your life, your heart being attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why one of the signs or one of the clues that tell you that if the heart is healthy or not, if the heart travels from this world and it dwells in the next life, then your heart is healthy. But if your heart is attached to this life and only thinks of this life and is preoccupied and dom your thoughts are dominated by this world and its details, then your heart is suffering. Your heart is really going through hard times. So one of the signs that a heart is healthy is that the heart travels to the next life. And it looks at this life from a distance because it understands how insignificant this life is and that the real life is the next one, not this life. Because in the next life, you will live forever, either in paradise, in eternal blessings, or in the hellfire, eternal punishment. This is one of the most important secrets of the heart. Hopefully, we will be able to benefit from it. And hopefully, it has helped open our eyes to the reality of our hearts and how we should maintain them, how we should take care of our hearts and nurture them. Inshallah, in future episodes, we'll try to deal with other secrets. We'll try to uncover beautiful secrets about the heart. So you're invited to join us. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Cry out for our love for you is so strong. For we know that from you we have come, and unto you we belong. How fortunate we are to be best with the ability.